Jim Nadeo is here to speak with us to talk about some of his um, experience with prostate cancer and the value of informed decision making. So thanks so much, Jim, for coming here and, and uh, being with us and sharing your story. Thank you, Chuck. I think, you know, those three words that you hear or you dread that you might hear, I have cancer or you have cancer. Um, I heard that the first time in October, I think, of 2012. I got a phone call from uh, the doctor that did the biopsy, and he indicated that uh, I had, they had found several cores, and that my Gleason score was seven. In my case, it was four plus three, which they talked about before. You know, it's interesting when you deal with that, you go through various stages. You know, it's almost like this, the stages of grief. You know, the first thing you do is, is denial. It, it can't be me. I had no family members, anyone who had prostate cancer. Um, I wasn't obese. I took care of myself. I ate what I thought was a pretty good diet. And none of those things there you were dealing with at that time. From there, you kind of shift in and you, you go to the next stage. And mine was, was anger because you, uh, I had been a, a caregiver for decades. My, my late spouse was a type one diabetic. So I had to deal with all the situations that you have to deal with diabetes. And then here I was by myself trying to deal with, uh, with prostate cancer and determine what I had to, to treat or to do. Um, you eventually from that, you, you go into well, I mean, in, in my case, I think there was the level of depression. You know, you, I didn't want anyone else to know that I had cancer. You know, I didn't discuss it with anybody. I didn't want to let them know or deal with that. But that eventually shifted, and I think in that case, it was after my first meeting with uh, a doctor or one of the surgeons, and, you know, his statement was, well, if you don't do anything, you'll be a dead man in three to five years. So you reach acceptance, and you then forward on to try to treat it however that might be. Now, I was fortunate. I had a, a radical prostatectomy the day after Christmas in 2012, made for a great holiday. And I have not experienced um, an increase in my PSA. You know, things are normal and it's been four years. You never know whether that will come later or you, what you're going to experience. And you're right, your way of life is different. You know, you have to deal with the side effects. Um, I guess in looking at it, they asked me, well, what advice would you give someone? And I know a number of those things already have been presented here, but I think some of them are important. I think the, the one thing I would do is be prepared. This, unlike a lot of treatments or diseases that you might deal with, most of the doctors that I dealt with first thing they say is, it's your decision. And I'm going, well, you know, I just, they just had listed a six or seven different types of things that you can do. Um, you know, different types of radiation, surgery, active surveillance. How do I decide what is the best to do? I think if you're prepared in, you know, us too is great for this because they have a lot of materials that the, a man can look at and kind of teach themselves or at least get up to that level. Um, I didn't have the advantage of having that support group at that time. I was fortunate to have a uh, group, or not a group, but I, I, I went to the University of Michigan for my biopsy and they had reading materials. And I found a book that was uh, done by a urologist who had uh, prostate cancer. And he talked about all the options and the pros and cons of each one. I took notes and I went in very enthusiastic, hoping that I would work with the first surgeon I, I would deal with, and he can answer all my questions. Problem I had with him was he didn't like his patients to ask questions. So, so uh, we quickly had a meeting of the minds that uh, I wouldn't go to him. And I know somebody mentioned that you can go to multiple uh, or you can get second or third opinions. In my case, I went to three surgeons and two radiologists. You know, one thing you'll find, and this, I don't know this is a general rule, but I found it in my case, is that 
all of them think that their treatment is the best that you can possibly get, and they are the best ones to do that treatment. Well, how do you evaluate that when, you're, when they're all telling you that this is what you should do? Um, what I found is that, you, uh, that well, you know, with, with that kind of thing, you have to do a lot of, I guess, questions and, and try to bring out as much as you can to make that decision. Um, I, the other thing I mentioned that I think is important is to be cautious. Don't rush into this. Like I said, I had five, four or five different doctors I went to before I made my final decision. And that was based on my age and based on what I could tolerate and based on my lifestyle, determine what I could do. But another important thing I think is to have someone there with you. Um, you, no matter how alert you are, you're not going to be able to pick up everything that they tell you. They're just throwing a lot of information at you at one time. And you need to, you need to be able to, to bring in all that information and get that information. So I think it's important to have maybe a set of questions before you go in to meet with them and make sure that they answer all your questions. And also make sure you have someone there with you, either a friend or a significant other, that can, can take notes when you don't. I, what I found is that after I went to you know, various doctors that we would sit down afterwards and go through and there was things that I didn't hear that my friend did. So I think that's very important to try to do that. Um, you know, it's, it's really, a, it comes down to it's your body and it's your life and you're in charge in one way of the management of your care. So, you know, you can take that information, but ultimately it has to fit the way you live and what, what, your, what your situation is or what you're going to do. Um, the final thing that I wanted to mention, and, and I didn't utilize this myself enough until after the treatment or after my surgery, is, you know, the presenters here that spoke before, you know, men don't talk about these things. And they don't talk about them among other men either that much. Uh, an organization like us too, or any kind of support group that you can go to, you will find men that will talk about it. And they've been there. They've walked that walk. They've already been there, they know what they, you know, what you're going to go through. The other thing that is really good, like I said, the materials that they provide, and also it's after the, the surgery, after the radiation. Um, they, uh, one thing that the, that I found with most of the, the healthcare professionals I dealt with, is they, they were very positive about their treatment and how it's going to cure you, but they understate the side effects. So they don't talk enough about or don't tell you that, you know, the large percentage of you are not going to be as good as you were before when it came to erectile dysfunction. Or incontinence, in some degree or another, many people, many men have. At least going to an US2 group, you can listen to other people who have that experience and tried all the various treatments that you, you know, that, that they were talking about before that might be helpful. Um, unless there are any other questions, I don't think, I think that's about all I have for today. And thank you very much for letting me share.